Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video about thermal energy and temperature. Everything, including solids like sinks and puppy dogs and rubber bands, everything has motion to it. Even though this rubber band does not appear to have any movement, and it seems to be sitting still on the table, at the atomic or molecular level, the contents of this, the atoms, the molecules, are vibrating. They're moving. And everything, everything that is an object that is a solid even, has some sort of molecular movement. The things that have the less movement are solids. You can see from this depiction, there's a little bit of what appears to be some vibration with the parts of this solid. Same thing with any of these solids here. Liquids have more motion in the at the molecules and at the atoms, and that's because they have more motion, they have spread apart. And gases have even more. They are spread apart even farther. But that's not just a concept. The motion is not just random. The motion is dependent upon temperature. Yes, things that are hotter have more motion at the molecular level. Here's an illustration. You can see it says cold and all the molecules are together. You can see it says hot, all the molecules are moving faster and have spread apart. And that's a hard concept for sometimes people to get. But the more heat, the more movement. The less heat, the less movement. In fact, heat itself, temperature itself, is defined by the amount of molecular movement of an object. So you think of the hottest things you can think of. Think of uh, boiling water on an eye at the stove. Think of uh, the pavement whenever you're outside in the middle of the summertime. The molecules of those things are moving much, much faster than they would if they were not hot. If that water was stuck in a freezer and it was some ice, it would be moving far, far less at the molecular level. So that is a concept that I want you to try to understand and see what it does and know what it does as far as heat goes. Now, the standard measurement for temperature is in Kelvin, the standard unit of temperature. Now, we're used to living in Fahrenheit land and even a little bit of knowledge of Celsius, but Kelvin is something that the average person in the school or on the street very rarely uses. And if you look at the numbers, you can probably see why. Uh, freezing point of water for Fahrenheit is 32 degrees. For Celsius, it's zero degrees, zero degrees. For Kelvin, it's a huge number, 273.15. So you can see why these numbers, we don't like to use big, big numbers like that. But Kelvin is the standard unit. Now, the reason we have it as the standard unit is because zero Kelvin is when you have no movement of molecules. Zero Kelvin happens to be about 460 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. So you can imagine hardly anything ever gets to zero Kelvin, which means every object you see, even if it's in the refrigerator, even if it's in the deepest of freezers, is going to have some kind of molecular movement. The things that are hotter have more movement. The things that are colder have less movement. And that can be judged through the Kelvin scale. Now let's talk about heat transfer. If you put some ice out of a freezer and put it at room temperature, the faster moving molecules of the air are warmer. They're warmer and they move faster than the molecules inside the ice. But if you put the ice around all these warm molecules, they're going to bump into the ice. 
and literally the molecules on the outside of the ice are going to start moving faster because of the faster moving molecules outside of it. And that is what causes a raise of temperature. Remember, faster moving stuff, molecules are hotter than colder moving, than colder molecules, and the colder molecules are moving less. So you can see we have this puddle of water here. The molecules in the puddle of water are moving more. The molecules that are still frozen in ice are moving less. And yes, if you get to steam, the molecules in the steam are moving way faster. So you may remember that we have talked about potential energy and kinetic energy. Every single object that is higher than zero Kelvin, and that's basically every object there is, has kinetic energy. The pencil that may be laying still on your desk appears still, but it has movement in it. Therefore, it has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, actual movement. The colder something is, the more potential energy it has. The warmer something is, the more actual movement, more kinetic energy it has on the molecular level. So the amount of heat has to do with the amount of kinetic energy you have on the molecular level. And when you refer to molecules moving faster or slower on a molecular level, you are referring to thermal energy. The word thermal is often associated with the word heat. And the hotter an object is, the faster the molecules will move. So when a warmer object, like this air, warms up a cooler object like this ice cube, you have heat transfer. Do you ever have cold transfer? No. You only have heat or an absence of heat. You do not have the cold which makes the air around it colder. You have heat which makes the, the solid ice around it warmer. Now sure, the air right around this ice is going to be colder, but it's because of the absence of heat that is sending into this ice. So all objects have some degree of heat, even things that are very, very cold. Now here's a question for you. If you are at the beach, and gosh, it's been so long since I have been to the beach, but why is the sand so much hotter than the water. The reality is, is objects transfer heat at different rates. The heat from the sun that is bearing down on both of these is transferred faster to an object like sand than it is an object like water. And we have a term here. The measure of how well objects accept heat is called its specific heat. Specific heat is the term. So all objects we can come up with a specific heat for. And the specific heat for sand is much lower than the specific heat for water. And that's why sand warms up quicker. At least that's a register of why it warms up quicker. Because it has a lower specific heat. And here you can see the specific heat of some common substances. And the water, 4,186, is very high. The sand is only 800. So the lower the specific heat, the faster it heats up. Now there is a formula for specific heat that is right here. That formula is a wicked formula because specific heat is not what it equals to. Because generally, specific heat has been found for pretty much every substance around. So that's why the formula is usually worded this way, so you can actually find the added sub, the amount of heat added, as opposed to the commonly known specific heat. Here is a calorimeter. A calorimeter measures specific heat. It's pretty simple. I mean, it measures the temperature and it increases by one degree Celsius the uh, the water around this object. And by decreasing the what the bleh, by increasing it by one degree Celsius, it measures the specific heat from there. 
So I'd like for you to know the concept behind specific heat, that the higher the number, the longer it takes to heat up, and the lower the number, the shorter it time it takes to heat up. I'd like for you to know the different or the concept of thermal energy in the first place, how you have everything that is moving. It's just a matter of how fast it's moving. I'd like for you to know about the Kelvin scale and about heat transfer is the transfer of kinetic energy, the transfer from faster moving molecules to slowing, slower moving molecules. Hey, I hope you have learned a little bit about heat transfer and temperature.